Hi, my name is Derek Lepisco. I'm with the Society for Biological Engineering, and today we have Chethan Kosla of uh, Stanford University, where he is a uh, department chair of chemical engineering as well as chemistry and biochemistry. Uh, today he will be giving the James E. Bailey lecture on natural products and the chemical engineer. So welcome. We're Thank glad you. to have you today. Thanks very much. So how are you enjoying the meeting? Oh, it's been busy, but it's been rewarding. Uh, I've been primarily catching up on all the young faculty mm -hmm. around this place who aspire to join the ranks of academia, academia academic faculty. And so um, it's been great to get to know what people are doing and what they're made of. Mm -hmm. And uh, my colleagues and I are looking forward to interviewing a bunch of them. Fantastic. Other than that, I haven't had much of an opportunity. I should say this morning I had a couple of hours to visit the Walker Museum mm -hmm. down here in Minneapolis. Uh, art is a hobby of mine and so that was nice too. Great. A good distraction. <laughs> yeah, I actually saw a concert uh, here and it was fabulous. Yeah, well, I was really impressed by the Walker Museum because it was beautifully curated. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check it out. You should. Uh, would you maybe give a summary of, of the talk you're going to give for some of the people who might be missing it at the meeting? Sure. Uh, I am essentially going to talk about a problem area that has been very near and dear to my heart for the past 20 years since I left Jay Bailey's lab mm -hmm. uh, many years ago. Uh, it's the problem of natural products discovery and engineering. Sure. As you know, uh, there have been a number of natural products that have been discovered over the past hundred years mm -hmm. and delivered immense value to mankind in a variety of settings, primarily in the setting of human health. And that entire endeavor has reached uh, a critical point in its evolution. I would say it's technology starved. And so I'll be talking about some of the opportunities that have been created in this field over the past 10, 20 years through not just our own work, but also other people's work in the field, and particularly about the challenges that we still encounter and need to solve if we're going to rejuvenate this field. Great. Well, so I guess there's there's been a lot of discussion about what constitutes a natural versus artificial product. Mm -hmm. um, could you maybe speak a little bit about what, what your definition of a natural product sure. is? A natural product, the broadest possible definition of a natural product is a molecule that's made from a biological source. Right. And that would include things like DNA and proteins. It would also include antibiotics, variety of vitamins, uh, biofuel mm -hmm. would qualify as a natural product. So it's a very broad definition. I will be primarily focusing on a subset of this repertoire of molecules made by nature, which are essentially structurally complex small molecules. Okay. So these are molecules that uh, are roughly in the molecular range, molecular weight range of 250 to 1,000. Okay. They're extremely complex and so they present real challenges to be made by artificial routes. Sure. So you brought up the question, what's the difference between a natural product and an artificial product? An artificial product would be something that a chemist and a chemical engineer can collaborate on to make in a scalable fashion, starting with earth, air, water, fire. Mm -hmm. Uh, a natural product is something that starts with the biological equivalent of earth, air, water, fire, which is corn syrup, <laughs> and is made into a complex molecule. Okay. So your lab, I, you spoke about biofuels. I know you do research with biofuels as well as pharmaceuticals. Is it difficult for you as, as someone who manages a lab to keep track of, of all these complex molecules? Uh, no. In fact, I find it to be immensely rewarding to be able to, the, the kind, my overarching philosophy in constructing a research program for my lab is to 
do thing, two things to create new knowledge and technology that will hopefully find use in the real world. And to be able to train students to think about problems that I think are very representative of the kinds of problems they're going to encounter and have to solve in the real world if they're going to be successful. And so having this, met, this, long, this broad palette mm -hmm. of natural products to pick from, depending on what the challenge is, allows me to pick the most illustrative problem for a student to take on mm -hmm. when they're going after some big fundamental question in the field. Is there a, a discovery that you're particularly proud of out of all the research? There are a few. Uh, um, it's, it's hard for me to answer that question mm -hmm. in a yeah, simple a fashion mm -hmm. because uh, I think my, my expectations for every student of mine is to do something that they would be immensely proud of before they graduate. And a large majority of them do live up to that high expectation. And for me to be able to pick right. one or two of those things is quite subjective. Uh, that's fair. Yeah, it's kind of an unfair question. No, it's it's a it's a fair question. I I, I guess I don't personalize the, the the discoveries that are made in my lab. I I I I take my role in those less so that of a quarterback than as a coach. Mm -hmm. And so uh, every quarterback has a good good solid. Uh, Feel goal to describe uh, <laughs> that they that they would want to they would want to have hold up as an example sure. of an answer to your question. That's good. So, do you have particular uh, areas of research that you would like to get into? Uh, I talked about one yesterday mm -hmm. at the bio uh, symposium. Yeah, at the symposium that Greg Stephanopoulos was organizing. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but uh, the, yeah, from time to time there are interesting problems that catch my attention uh, and I try my best to uh, come up with a, a metric that allows me to decide whether something can be pursued in my lab. There's a, a, a neurological bandwidth issue that also <laughs> comes up. Uh, by the time I, uh, the 15th person in my lab gets going on their projects, right. I reach the limits of my ability to s keep on top of their research and sink my teeth into the science that underlies their research. And so since my lab has been of that size for the past 20 years, for any new thing to come in, something has to go up. OK. That makes sense. Well, we look forward to uh, what else might come out of it. I do too. <laughs> well, I'd really like to thank you for sharing your thoughts Thank you. today, and we really look forward to the lecture tonight. Thanks very much. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank Good you. Good luck.